The Home Affairs Bureau okay. recently uh, rejected mm -hmm. uh, a request to add more racing mm -hmm. days. And you obviously said, well, you know, that's obviously kind of an adverse impact, mm -hmm. especially on the Jock Club mm -hmm. in its fight mm -hmm. against illegal betting. I, I, I would not say they rejected it. Uh, okay. I would say they, they cautioned. Uh, having said this, in a way, uh, we have had a dialogue with Home Affairs probably since five, six, seven years about this topic. Okay. And I only can say that in 2005 and 2006, the Home Affairs agreed in principle with our position. Because the Home Affairs put a paper forward mm -hmm. in which they, in a way, in the light of our taxation reform, endorsed our proposal of five additional race meetings mm -hmm. and more simulcast meetings. So I think I can understand sometimes it's about timing. Why, in a way, uh, with the tax reform, this proposal was not brought forward? Because one could see it would need much more time, discussion in LegCo and in Exco. Mm. So that's why we reluctantly said, OK, we come back to this topic at a later time. Okay. We have to get the tax reform too. So I only mm. can say the original position of Home Affairs was receptive. Okay. Maybe it's a timing issue, but mm. we are not pressing for something immediately that we say it has to be implemented tomorrow. Okay. But I think one has to recognize it is a serious problem which will affect us in the future. What exactly is the impact of illegal betting now? Mm -hmm. And would the addition of one, mm -hmm. two, or five racing days really mm -hmm. dent illegal betting? I think illegal betting is always something you cannot, in a way, say, if I do one thing, it is completely stopped. Sure. But we think, in a way, that's a framework and the angle for illegal betting and in a way for betting and money which go out of Hong Kong has changed. With the Macau uh, competition situation, sure. one can see clearly that there is a significant increase of gaming opportunities in Macau. There's a significant increase in competition within Macau. Mm. Even we put now the additional race meeting outside, if you look now at additional simulcast opportunities, mm. We know that 209 Sportsbook will open in Macau. An opening of a Sportsbook will mean horse racing, football betting, basketball, etc. If one looks at the horse racing side, if we have even Hong Kong horses running overseas, mm. our customers come in our OCBs. They pick up the telephone and say, I want to follow Viva Macau sure. running in Dubai. So this, there is a gaming opportunity. <laughs> Mm -hmm. which definitely illegal operators and offshore operators will definitely welcome because we cannot satisfy obviously the amount here. Sure. So that is the first hook into a customer. And this is not the one race. It is that our customer base systematically will be eroded. And everybody who is in mm -hmm. consumer product marketing knows as soon as you lose a customer or a competitor mm. gets an access to a customer with direct marketing and especially with very sophisticated sure. operators. This we see as a strategic disadvantage. So what is the next step now? If you say that <laughs> Home Affairs Bureau has in principle <laughs> endorsed what you recommended then? Uh, reading now articles, it seems to be that Home Affairs have reserved a neutral position. Okay. But we think <laughs> we would like to start a really systematic dialogue, how we can bring this forward in the interest of Hong Kong. How has the fight been with illegal bookmakers now? Has there been any progress? I think definitely, and this is what we think in the cooperation we had, Home Affairs and the Jockey Club, when we could convince in a way Home Affairs and later finance that we need a change of our framework, how we can do betting products. Sure, yeah. I think uh, the gaming reform is a success in a way that we think we have definitely clawed back money from the illegal market. Mm. Uh, with our rebate program, yeah. which is really targeted at those who are price sensitive, sure, yeah. and especially the illegal or people who bet with illegal are much more price sensitive. Sure. We will never go on the aspect of credit. That's something we cannot compete and will not compete. Okay. But we have a growth in this segment of around 70%. So, and this 70% has come definitely that people who were probably enticed with the illegal market or going offshore, mm -hmm. yeah. that they feel enticed coming back. 
So that's a great success if you look at the turnover and the gross profit. Mm. Unfortunately, of <laughs> course, in our original proposal, we asked for five more race meetings and more simulcast opportunities. The benefit of this additional gross profit we generate yeah. is gone to the government only. The government probably has an additional benefit out of it in the region of 1.1 billion. Okay. Additional tax in the relation to a do-nothing scenario. Our income has practically shrunk <laughs> in relation to a do-nothing scenario. Sure. We are not, in a way, short-term worried about it, because first of all, I think what is good is that we have shown that one can revitalize yeah. the racing site. But we think it is not uh, fair <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. to say the benefits go only to one side. Because mm, mm. we need, in a way, a healthy surplus again. We think in the light of the competition in Macau, we have to invest around six to eight billion into our race courses, into our facilities, to make it more competitive, to be able to keep our customers in Hong Kong, and especially to have new facilities. Mm -hmm. If one looks at corporate entertainment, what I mentioned, we are every Wednesday night booked out. So we want, in a way, establish a venue where you yep. can meet this demand, but you have to invest money. Six to eight billion, how is that going to be spent? I think, in a way, that is, at the moment, the framework. We think a majority of the money would be really spent on the completely creating a new rethink experience. Mm. First of all, for our current customers, we think, in a way, that uh, we have some very, very good facilities, especially for the owner segment, which sure. we identified four years ago as a major target for potential competitors, especially, in a way, with the upcoming competition in Macau casinos. Yeah. We have invested significant money in the owner segment. We have great success, mm. attendance up, turnover up, mm. satisfaction of the owners up, applications of people who want to have horses significantly up. But we have to go besides the owner segment. Yeah. We have to look now at the different other segments. And I think, for example, in our public side, mm. we have a lot of public facilities without aircon. This is something which is not acceptable yeah. in a standard. So this facility should have a standard like any really good shopping mall, at least. Mm. But then you have to look at a very sophisticated customer segmentation and say, what you as a customer want. So in this exercise, we have done a very, very comprehensive customer segmentation exercise. We are now translating this into facilities plan, into service plans. Because I feel strongly about the one advantage we have in Hong Kong. It's outstanding service quality. So that is, we develop the facility plan, we develop the service plan, and then in a way this is then molded in a business plan, and then in the end, mm -hmm. you have to see how you bring it in an architectural experience. Mm -hmm. So, and this takes time. I would have loved to complete this exercise in <laughs> three months and six months, uh, but realistically, it will take us till June. We have identified quick areas of investment, mm -hmm. but it will be, and the race courses, and the whole experience going to the race course, we think has to be a different one than we have at the moment. We have lifted the game in the light of the competition so that you have really an opportunity to show what is the difference between an in-house gaming activity mm, okay. and what is the difference between horse racing. And we feel strongly horse racing is life, it's activity, it is yeah. skill, it's information, yeah. and it's experience. So this experience, you have to bring the experience across. And that is a major shift before we looked very much at that as a food and beverage outlets. Okay. That is how you channel transactions. So it is very important that you have this well done. But experience is more. If you sit, for example, in a box and you have only screens, we think that doesn't give you the differentiation from a real horse racing experience. You have to bring the sound across. You have to bring the competition across. You have to bring the horse across. So how you do this, and that is a major, major review of everything we do and how we offer it to the customer.